In this video, we're going to go over the process of creating a function in SQL Server. Now, a function is going to fall under the programmability folder, similar to a stored procedure right here. And there are different types. Uh, the two main ones here are table-valued functions and scalar-valued functions. And the difference is in terms of what is going to be <clears throat> returned when you call it. It's just what it sounds. A table is going to return a whole table of results, so multiple rows, multiple columns. And a scalar valued function is just going to give one result per function. So you put an input in, you only get one input back out. In terms of this demo, we are just going to focus on creating a scalar valued function. So similar to a stored procedure, go in here, right click, and click New. Now, just as, again, as an overview, the main difference here is between a function and a stored procedure is in terms of how you're going to use it and what you're trying to do. In a stored procedure, like we learned, you can do a lot of things. You can do some inserts. You can truncate. You can return a set. You can do a lot of stuff. In a function, you're really just focused on returning values or a single value. So, in you got to think about what what it is you're trying to accomplish the other difference is when you think about calling a stored procedure you need to use that execute syntax before you call it whereas in a function you can actually call it within a select statement or if you're using an apply which is a little more advanced you can use it there as well so here's the basic structure similar to a stored procedure that sql server gives you for creating a function we are going to again get rid of some of the fluff here um, we can put our information in here. Uh, test. Give it a name similar to the stored procedure and similar to a table, the same structure schema dot name. So we'll call this UFN. And, and what we're going to do here, I'll explain a little bit, but we're going to call this get first order date. Similar to the USP, where that was user stored procedure, UFN is user function. You'll probably see that here. Yep. User function. Or UDF, sometimes user defined function, you'll see. Parameters here, in this case, uh, you don't always need it, but we're going to we're going to use it eventually, but we'll just keep this blank for now. So making our way down the rest of this syntax here, the return section here, this line is indicating what is the data type that's going to be returned from this function. Like we said before, a scalar function is only going to return one val one value per function. So what is that value going to be? What type is it? In our case, it'll be a date. As we move down here, declare the return variable. So this stuff, this variable here is going to be found here, here, and here. It's a little funky when it comes to, to how this works. You have to give it a name and the data type. It's kind of like when we declare it up here. So the syntax is, and what we're going to call this first order date. And this will be date. And you have to include a semicolon here. This is something you're just going to have to remember. So we're declaring it and then we're going to set the value and then we're going to return it. And this return value, this has to match. So we're saying this function is going to return a date. We don't really know much else about it. And then once we get into the code, we're declaring a variable that's going to hold the result of some SQL statement. And then we're going to return it back out here at the end. So uh, let's see here. Let's just let's just play around with this just to test it. So here's how the syntax is going to look. Select first order date, the name of it, and then equals. And we can get rid of the rest of this. Select equals, and let's just give it a date. So we can just do. Uh, 
today. Again, this is just for, for testing purposes. Just to give you a feel for what this is, what this is going to look like. And again, in these functions here, you got to be careful with the, with the semicolons. So what this says is this function is going to return a date. And then once we get into the actual code itself, the first thing we need to do is declare an internal variable. This is, again, this is separate than this. Declare first order date as a date. We're going to fill this variable with this select statement. In this case, we're just hard coding a, a value and then return it back out. So let's create this. Now we've created this and, and we can call this new query window. And like I said, this functions are called through the select statement. So if you just were to do this, you would need to give it empty brackets because it's a function. It's something functions generally uh, require a variable, but you don't need it, but it's still expecting it to be empty like this. It's a little different than a sort of procedure where you just write it next to it without the brackets. You need these or the parentheses. All right. So every time we run this, it comes through here. It says we're expecting a date, declare it, a variable placeholder, and we're inputting it here. So let's say, and then we're returning it. And that's what we got here. That's why we got this result. So let's say we were to change this and say, I don't know, to the uh, 15. Alter, run it again. Now we're getting this result. So now whatever we put in here is what's going to happen. And I have some code here that's going to give us the minimum order date based on after these joins. And the final part I missed here is we're going to have to actually introduce a input variable where business ID, entity ID equals employee ID. And I just know uh, from my research that this is employee ID from this table. So like I said here, we needed to add something here. We were going to add it a little bit later. So we can declare our variable here. It's similar to how we did in a store procedure. In this case, we'll call it employee ID and it's an integer. So now before we just had this blank. Now, once we alter this, it's going to be expecting this variable, something in here. And then what's going to happen is this variable is going to be placed here. So if we do employee ID is one, what's going to happen is it's going to come through here say, okay, we're expecting a date after this come at, at the end of this, create a placeholder variable, set this variable based on this statement where the ID matches this and then return that value. So let's again for, for testing, just to see what this looks like. What if we were to select, just run this on its own equals, um, 255. It's a guess. I don't know what this is. Uh, I should probably find out what the order dates are or what the yeah, employee IDs are. Let's see. Yeah, let's do. Okay, let's use this one. Okay. So employee 275, when you run this on its own, it says the minimum order date was this date. And that's essentially what we're going to do for any time we put a value in here, in here, it's going to come through this way. So let's alter this. Now, if we run this without it, we need a, we're looking for an, an argument for this parameter right here. Let's put this in here and see what happens. Same result. There we go. Same exact result. 
Now the last thing I want to show here is how you would actually implement this in a normal query. So right now we're just hard coding this. We're saying 275, great, we have a number, but I don't know how useful that's actually going to be. But let's, if we take a look actually at our table that we built before, let's just do select all from our rep performance table. We have this employee ID column. So what we could actually do here, because we can use this in a select, if we wanted to add a whole nother column here called first order date for each employee, we could do it and it would look like this. So we could do, let's just, uh, we'll, we'll type them all out for clarity. Order year. And then we can now also put this in here. Let's get rid of this. Give it an alias as first order date. And instead of putting a hard coded value, we can pass in the column name because we know that is an employee ID. It's the same thing. We don't need to, we don't need to manually write it. It'll pull it from the table. So let's see what happens here. There it is. So now each time when we ran this query, every time for each row, it called this function that we made and passed the employee ID into the field or in, as a parameter and return this field and return this value that we could put in this field. So you can use your imagination in terms of how you could use that. There's a lot of ways to do it, uh, but it's just another object available in SQL Server. And I hope this was a way to, to get you going and to explain this. And in the next video, we're going to move to looking at views and how to create those as well. Thanks for watching.